From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a special Cube Conversation coming to us from our Boston area studio. We, we know that so much has changed in 2020 with the global pandemic on, with people working from home. Staying safe is super important, and that especially is true uh, when it comes to the, the threats that are facing us. So really happy to welcome to the program Hardik Modi. We're going to be talking about the NetScout Threat Intelligence Report for the first half of 2020. Hardik's the AVP of Engineering for Threat and Mitigation Products. Hardik, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Stuart. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so first, set this up. This is NetScout does these, these threat reports uh, and on a pretty, pretty regular cadence. Um, mm -hmm. I have to think that the first half of 2020, we'll dig into this a little bit, is a little different because I, I know everybody, when they had their plans at the beginning of 2020, uh, by the time we got to March, we kind of shredded them um, and started over or made some serious adjustments. So uh, why, why don't you introduce us to, to this and then we'll talk specifically ab about the, the first half 2020 results. Right, thanks Stu. So I'm here to speak about the fifth NetScout Threat Intelligence Report. So this is something that we do every six months. Um, in my team, in particular, the NetScout Threat Intelligence Organization, we maintain visibility across the internet, and in particular, like threat activity across the internet, and very specifically with a strengthened DDoS activity. And so, you know, there's a lot of data that we have collected, there's a lot of analysis that we conduct on a regular basis. And then every six months, we try to roll this up into you know, a report that gives you a view into everything that's happened across the landscape. So this is our report for the first half of the year. So, you know, through June 2020. Uh, and yes, you know, as we came into March 2020, everything changed. And in particular, when, you know, the, the pandemic kind of set upon us, uh, you know, countries, entire kind of continents went into lockdown. And we intuited that this would have an impact on the threat landscape and you know, this is, even as we've been reporting through it, this is our first real roll up and look at really everything that happened and everything that changed in the first, first half of 2020. Yeah, it, it absolutely has such a huge impact. Uh, you know, my background, Hardik, is in networking. You think about how much over the, the, the last decade we've built out, you know, those corporate networks, all the Wi-Fi environments, all the security put there, and all of a sudden, well, we had some people remote, now everybody is remote. Uh, and, you know, that has a ripple on corporate IT, as well as, you know, those of us at home that have to do the home IT uh, piece there. So wh why don't you give us a uh, look inside the report. What are some of the main takeaways uh, that, that, that uh, the report had this time? No, so you're right. The, you know, the network became everything, you know, for us, and it's it, the network became how we, how how our students like attended school, right? How we did our shopping, uh, you know, how we did certainly finance, and and most definitely how for a lot of us how we did work, and suddenly the network, which you know certainly was a driver for productivity and like you know just just business um, worldwide, suddenly became that much more central. And so, you know, you know, we tend to look at the network both sort of at the enterprise level, but then also uh, a lot of what we get to see is at the service provider level. So what's happening on the big networks worldwide? And that's what we rolled up into this report. So a few things that I want to kind of highlight from the report. The first thing is there were a lot of DDoS attacks. So we, we recorded it through our visibility 4.83 million DDoS attacks in the first six months of the year. That's almost 30,000 attacks a day. And you know, it's not like you know we hear about thirty thousand outages every day. It certainly, aren't thirty thousand outages every day. But you know, this is you know, this is an ongoing onslaught, you know, for anybody who exists on the internet. And this didn't abate at all through through the first half of the year. If you kind of go like just look at the numbers, you know, it it, it went up fifteen percent for the same period year on year. But then as you enter into March, and in particular, like you know, the date, you know, when when the WHO sort of announced the global pandemic. That's essentially the, the start that, that we mark. From that day onwards, you know, the, the, the rise in attacks year on year for the same period, you know, a year ago was 25%. So that, that, that really just, just in sheer numbers, like a lot changed. And then, you know, as we go a level deeper and we look at like the nature of these attacks, um, you know, a lot of that actually has evolved considerably, um, you know, over the past few years. And then in particular, like we're able to highlight a few stats in the first half of the year. And certainly like a lot of the drivers for this, the technical drivers are understood. And then, and then there's just the human drivers for this, right? You know, we understand that a lot more people are at home. A lot more people are reliant on the internet. 
and you know just sad to say but you know certainly also a lot more people aren't as engaged with school with work with society at large and you know these these tend to have knock on effects across you know large a lot of things that we do in life but also in like cyber crime and in particular like in the ddos space yeah, maybe if you could for our audience, uh, I think they're in general familiar with DDoS. It, it, it's typically mm -hmm. when you know sites get overwhelmed with traffic. Different from say everybody working at home is be a little bit more cautious about phishing attacks. You're getting you know links and text, links and email. Super important thing. Please check this. You know, please don't click those links. Um, does this impact you know those workers at home, or is it you know all the corporate IT and all the traffic going through those uh, that there's ways that they can stop? halt that or you know interfere uh, get sensitive data that's a really good point and in, in large parts i mean and like with a lot of other kind of cyber crime activity this is primarily felt inside the enterprise and so so the you know so as far as like you know companies are concerned and people who are using vpn and other kinds of remote access to get to critical resources the the key challenge here is the denial of availability and so, so okay. So you're right. You, you, you know, let's take a step back. DDoS, distributed denial of service. This is typically when, like, a, a large polarity of um, devices are used to direct traffic towards a device on the internet. And we typically think of this as a site. And so maybe you know, uh, your your favorite newspaper went down because of a DDoS attack, or you couldn't get to your bank or your retail, um, you know, e-commerce as a result of the DDoS attack. But this this plays out in many different ways, including you know the inability for people to you know access work because just because you know their VPN concentrators have been DDoS. Um, I think you know just coming back to you know the the split between people who work for a company and the company themselves. I think it's, you know ultimately is a shared responsibility. There's some amount of um, uh, best practices that that employees can follow. I mean, a lot of this enforcement and, and, you know, primarily ensuring that your services are running to expectation, you know, as always is going to be the responsibility of the enterprise and something that enterprise security typically will want to uh, cater for. All right, and and how are these attacks characterized? You said it was you know up significantly, fifteen percent for the the half year overall, twenty five percent overall. Um, anything that differentiates, you know, big attacks, small attacks. Do we know how many of them actually, uh, you know, freeze a site or you know pause? How much uh, is uh, how much activity is going on? Right. So 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 what I will say is that within you know just those numbers, which is simply just counting attacks, right? Even within those numbers, uh, a key aspect that has changed is the is the rise in like what we call, you know, multi-vector attacks. And so these are these are attacks in which they're you know you know you go back maybe five years you know certainly like going back further. Typically, a DDoS attack would involve a single technique that was being used you know to cause damage. And then over time, like as many techniques were developed. Uh, and new vulnerable services are discovered on the internet, what we find is that there's, you know, occasionally there would be a combination of these vectors, as we call them, being used against the target. And so a big thing that has changed about, uh, within the last two years is what we think of as the rise in multi-vector attacks. And what we are seeing is that, like, e attacks that inv involve even 15 separate vectors are up considerably like over a thousand percent compared to compared to the same time uh, last year and correspondingly attacks that involve a single vector are down uh, in, a, in a really big way and so we're just seeing a shift in the general like the techniques that are used within these attacks um, and you know that has been considerable over certainly you know the same time 2019 but if you go back two years even you know it, it would it would seem like a complete sea change. What what other uh, key things, uh, key learnings did you have uh, from the survey this year that that you can share? Yeah, so one thing I want to I want to highlight that you know we kind of and I think it's been you know implicit in in some of your questions, certainly in many conversations that I have. Like, what is the cost of these attacks? Like, you know, what is ultimately the impact of these attacks on society? And and one of the ways in which we we tend to think of the impact is in you know simply like outages. Um, you know, like you know, an e-commerce site that does a certain amount of business every day, you know, they can easily recognize that, all right, if I'm off 
you know, for a day, for two days, for seven days, you know, here's the impact to my business. So that, that, that tends to be understood at the individual enterprise level. Um, another, another cost that, that often is, is well recognized is like the cost of mitigating attacks. And so now there's, you know, whether it's the service provider, the enterprise themselves, other forms of business or other entities who will, um, you know, invest in mitigation uh, techniques and capacity, like those costs tend to, you know, kind of rack. What we have done, and thanks to our kind of really unique visibility into service provider networks worldwide, what we've been able to do is extract, you know, essentially the, what we call the DDoS attack coefficient. And, and this is, think of it as like, you know, here's how much DDoS attack traffic is going on worldwide or across any set of networks at any given time. So if you had zero DDoS in the world, that number will be zero, but it most definitely is not. You know, there's, there, you know, we have represented numbers for different parts of the world. You know, this can be many, many, many gigabits per second, many terabits per second. And, and essentially there's, a, there's even just a transit cost for carrying this traffic from one point to another. And that is actually like, the, you know, what we call the, the DDoS attack coefficient. And that cost is something that, you know, I want to highlight is being borne by everyone. So, so this this ultimately is what shows up in your your you know your internet bills, whether you're a residential subscriber, whether you're using your phone and paying for uh, internet you know through your phone, or you're an enterprise and now you have you know you have network connections from your service providers. This ultimately this is a cost that we're bearing as a society. This is the first time that we've actually conducted research like into into this phenomenon, and I'm proud to say that we've captured this in. Uh, you know, spread across multiple geographies of the world. Yeah, it's, it's a big challenge these days. <laughs> the internet is a big place. Uh, there, there's worry about you know fragmentation of the internet. There's worry about that some of the uh, some of the co co countries out there, as well as some of the large uh, multinational global companies out there, really are walling off piece of the internet. Mm -hmm. Hardik, one, one thing I'm, I'm curious about. We talked about the impact of work from home and have a more distributed workforce. One of the other big megatrends we've been seeing even before 2020 is uh, the growth of edge computing. You talk about the trillions That's of great. IoT devices that will be out there. It, 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 does DDoS play into this? You know, I, I just, the scenario runs through my mind. Okay, great, we've got all these vehicles running that have some telemetry. All of a sudden, if they can't get their telemetry, that's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, so this is both the, the you know, this is, the devices themselves and the, the you know basically the impact that you could see from an attack on them but more often what we see on the internet in the here and now is actually the use of these devices to attack other like more established entities on the internet so then so for us now for for many years we've been talking about the use of iot devices in in attacks and and simply the fact that so many devices are being deployed that are basically they're they're vulnerable from the get-go, insecure at birth essentially, and then deployed across the internet. Um, you know, even if they were secure to start, they often don't have update mechanisms. And now, you know, they, you know they you know over a period of time, new vulnerabilities are discovered in in those devices, and they are used to attack other devices. So, <clears throat> in this report, we have talked about uh, a particular family of malware called Mirai, and Mirai has been around since 2016, been used in many high profile attacks. Um, and over time, there have been a number of variations to Mirai. And, and you know, we, we absolutely keep track of, you know, the growth in these variations and the kinds of devices where that, that they, they attack, um, sorry, that they compromise and then use to attack other uh, targets. Um, we've also kind of gone into another malware family that, that has been, you know, talked about a bit called Lucifer, and Lucifer was another, you know, I, I think originally more Microsoft Windows. So you're going to see it more on, on your classic kind of client and server kind of computing device. But over time, we've seen we have reported on um, Linux variants of uh, Lucifer that not only can be installed on on Linux devices, but also have uh, DDoS capabilities. So we're tracking like the emergence of new botnets. Um, still, like Stu, going straight back to your question, you know, they are, you know, this is where IoT, you know, even for all the promise that it holds for us as society, you know, we don't get this right. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of pain in our future just coming from the use of these devices and attacks.
Well, I, I thought it was bad enough that we had an order of magnitude more surface area to defend against on. I hadn't really thought about the fact that all of these devices might be turned into a, an attack vector back on what we're doing. All right, Hardik, so, so you need to give us some, the ray of hope here. Uh, we, we've got all of these threats out here. What, you know, how's the industry doing overall defending against this? What more can be done uh, to, to stop these threats? What are, what are some of the actions people, in, in especially enterprise tech, should be doing? Yeah, no, so I absolutely start with, you know, just awareness. Like, you know, it's, this is why we publish the report. This is why we have resources like NetScout Cyber Threat Horizon that provides continuous visibility into, in, into attack activity worldwide. So it absolutely just starts with that. We're actually, you know, this is not necessarily a subject of the, the report because it's happened in the second half of the year. But there have been a wave of high profile attacks associated with extortion attempts you know, over the past month. And you know, these attacks aren't necessarily complex. Like, you know, the techniques being used aren't novel. Um, you know, I think in many ways, like, you know, these are things that we would have considered maybe run of the mill, at least for us on the, the research side and the people who live this kind of stuff. But you know, they have been successful. And you know, a number of a, you know, a number of companies right now, a number of entities worldwide right now are kind of rethinking what they're what they're doing about, uh, in particular DDoS protection. And for us, you know, our observation is that this happens every few years, where every few years there's uh, essentially a reminder that that DDoS is a threat domain. DDoS typically will involve an intelligent adversary on the other side, somebody who wants to cause you harm. You know, to defend against it, you know, there there are plenty of well-known kind of techniques uh, and and like kind of methodology. But that is something that you know enterprises, you know, all of us, governments, service providers, those of us on the research side, have to kind of stay on top of, keep reminding ourselves ourselves of those best practices and use them. Um, and you know, I'll say that again, the the for me, the ray of hope is that we haven't seen a new vector in the first six months of the year, even as we've seen a combination of other known vectors. And so for, for these, you know, just from that perspective, you know, there's, you know, these attacks we should be able to defend against. So that's, that's essentially where I'll leave this, you know, in, in terms of like, you know, the hope for the future. All right, Hardik, what final tips do you have? How do people get uh, the, the, the report itself and, and how do they keep up? Where, where, where do you point everyone to? Yes, so the report itself is going to be, is, is live on the 29th of September, uh, 2020. It will be available at netscout.com slash threat report. Uh, I'll also point you to, to another resource, Cyber Threat Horizon, that gives you more continuous visibility into, into attack activity, and that's netscout.com slash horizon. And so these are the key resources that I leave you with. Again, you know, this is, you know, there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty to be hopeful about. Like, you know, I've, as I said, you know, there hasn't been a new, a new vector that we've, we've uncovered in the first six months of the year. This is as opposed to seven vectors in the year 2019. So, you know, that is, that is something that, you know, certainly like gives me hope. And, you know, for the things that are, that we've talked about in the report, you know, we know how to defend against them. So, you know, this is something that I think with action, we'll be able to, to live through just fine. Well, Hardik, thanks so much for sharing the data, sharing the insight, pleasure catching up with you. Okay, likewise, Stu, thank you. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the videos we have, including many of the upcoming events. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.